Hey guys, well, today I got another bad day news story for you. Now, I put out a video yesterday because I wanted to share with you guys my little hobby of what I do every so often with my cousin Sal. You know, what we do is we buy a box of cars, we open up the box, and we see if maybe we could get a couple rookies or some error cards, mistaken cards. They're worth a nice, valuable chunk of money. You save them for a couple of years. Maybe you get a buyer and you make a couple of dollars. But it's a great hobby. So that's why I put out that video. I hope some of you liked it. I know it didn't catch too many views, but this is something that I like to do. Ever since I was a kid, I collect baseball cards. And I love old-time baseball. They're the best. Those old-timers, they used to go out drinking. The next morning, they go up to plate and they'd be hitting home runs. Boom, boom, and they were the best. But anyway, so I wanna get into the story about back in the neighborhood when I was growing up and I was a part of the Bath Avenue crew. Now, once John Polio was murdered in 1988, April 4th, 1988, that's when things pretty much got hectic for all of us on the avenue. Because John Polio was murdered, we really didn't know where it came from. We had an idea where it came from, but we really didn't know. Unless, you know, the person tells you who did it, and that didn't happen. We found out later on in life. But when this was going on, after John Polio was murdered, me and Paulie Galino became very tight, like best friends. So Paulie G had a drug business on a beeper. A couple other kids in the neighborhood had drug businesses with beepers. And uh, there was a lot of beefs over drugs because if I have customers that are actually dialing your beeper number now, I feel like you're taking my customers. That was the mentality of the neighborhood back in the day. So. In my neighborhood, we had some brothers called the Temperinos. You had Alfredo Temperino. He was a really good guy. He ended up killing himself by accident. He put a gun to his head. There was a bullet in the chamber. He pulled the trigger and it went off and he killed himself in front of his girlfriend. Very sad story. Alfredo was a good guy growing up. Always had nice jeans on and always dressed good handsome guy, but these are the things that happened in my neighborhood. Then there was Sal Temperino. Sal Temperino was a tough kid from the neighborhood. He used to love to rob and steal every so often. We would keep Chicky while he would rob a store on 86th Street. He wasn't a, a bad guy. What happened was one night he goes to stick up a bar. In the bar, somebody's a cop, they have a gun. They threw a shot at him, and they kill him instantly. Another sad story. Now, Joey Temperino was left. Joey Temperino was actually the younger brother out of the three. He lived on Bay 16th between Bath and Rutherford. I lived on Bay 16th between Bath and Cropsey. I knew Joey Temperino all my life. We used to go to school 163. Joey Temperino maybe had 18 months of me. He was a little older than me. And we used to sit in class, for example, in 163 elementary school, and Joey Temperino would always be sitting in the back. So, you know, back in those days, a lot of kids didn't go to school. It ain't like today you have to go to school. You know, when we were kids growing up, we always used to cut out, hang out uh, in the house, hide, go to the park, and, uh, you know, never listen. But it's funny because I look back in those days and Joey Temperino, he was known as a tough kid growing up. And he would always sit in back of the class and I would look him back and like he'd be waving. And he was always there. He was in my class like maybe twice in my lifetime in 163. But he would never show him. When he did show, he was sitting back of the class. So it was pretty funny because back in the day, Guys didn't go to school. They didn't want to go to school, you know? And even when you went to school, 
the principal and the assistant principal used to hit us on the head with his ring. He used to have a ring and hit it like this, bang, you know. But back in the day, when we used to go to school, the teachers used to beat us up. They used to slap us. That's how different it was. And if a teacher slap you today, you have a lawsuit. So times were very different back then. And every day after school, you always had a fist fight. That's what we did when we were younger. So getting back to Joey Temporino, at this time it was maybe 89 and Paulie G had a nice drug business going for him. Uh, the kid Albert Slavin had a nice drug business going for him. Mike Marola had a drug business. Georgie Conti collected a lot of money from drugs. A lot of drugs were going around the neighborhood. So on this particular day, I'm driving down the avenue. I had a Corvette at the time. And I'm with Fabrizio. And Paulie G is on Bay 16th and Bath Avenue talking to Joey Temporino. Now, Joey Temporino was known as a tough kid. He really didn't do much to, to earn his name as a tough kid. He really rode his brother's coattails, Sal and Alfredo. But, you know, we knew him as a tough kid because he was a little older. So I'm driving down the avenue with Fabrizio my Corvette, and I see Paulie Galino talking to Joey Temporino. And I really don't know what's up, but I know something's up. So I stop and I get out of the car to say, you know, what's up, what's going on. And all of a sudden, I see Paulie G swinging on Joey Temporino. Paulie G throws a swing at him. He hits him, he taps him, falls to the ground. Joey Temporino has a pistol on him. He goes for the pistol. <clears throat> Paulie G snatches it, me and Fabrizio tackle. Joe Temperino, and we all three of us end up giving him a beating. We take his gun, and he's on the floor, all beat up. And then all of a sudden, he runs to the club, Anthony Sparrow Social Club, that's a couple doors away, and he calls Sparrow. At that time, Anthony Sparrow comes running out, and he says, what are you guys doing over here? What are you, out of your fucking mind? And Sparrow is yelling at Paulie G, me, and Fabrizio. And we're telling Anthony Sparrow, Anthony, he pulled the gun out on us, which he did have a gun, and he was getting ready to pull it out. Now, this beef was basically a drug beef. Some of Paulie G's customers was calling Joey Temporino, and Paulie G approached Joey Temporino and told him, stay away from my customers. Joey Temporino thought that he was a little tougher than Paulie G. Paulie G was just making his bones at this time and they wanted to meet and have a talk. And what happened was we ended up beating down Joey Temperino. So with that, Anthony Sparrow was very upset that we beat up Joe Temperino on Bay 16th and Bat. He told us don't ever do it again. There was a big sit down over that. He corrected poorly. And these are the things we did sometimes without other people's authority. And we took Joey Temperino's gun. He wanted it back. He never got it back. Now, also going back with Joey Temperino back in the day, when I was in my teens, Joey Temperino had some kind of problem where some woman saw him do something. The woman ended up living on 24th Avenue and Cropsey Avenue, and he asked me and Albert Slavin to take a ride with him to watch this woman. Now, every day after work, this woman got off a bus and walked to her home. Now, she was some kind of witness now, we were maybe 14, 15 years old, and Joey Temperino asked me and Albert Slavin to hit this woman, punch him in her face, and like give her a beating. And we took the ride with him 
but I couldn't do it. I said, Joe, I said, I can't do this. This is not for me. I'm not that guy to do something like that. And Albert Slavin also muttered out, he didn't want to do it either. But that was something that I didn't want anything to be involved in. I never know what happened with this woman, but I know she's seen something and eventually Joey wanted someone to give her a message. This way she wouldn't testify or go to a grand jury. It was something like that. But I'm just giving you an idea of back in the day, how things were, how crazy they were. There was always some kind of problem, whether it was over drugs, whether somebody didn't like somebody, and you either took care of it, you left it alone, but Paulie G was not one to wreck with. And uh, unfortunately, in the end, Anthony Spell gave the order to kill Paulie G. So that's a short story for today. I hope you liked it. I got another story coming later on in the day. It's Saturday. Enjoy your day today. Enjoy your weekend. I hope you're spending it with somebody you love. And with that said, thank you for all. All the love you send me, I'm sending right back to you. Love you guys. Talk to you soon. Bye.